Hello, good afternoon. I'm at This Museum is Not Obsolete because I'm having a bit of a break from the Teletubby Tidal Wave build. It's going very well, but there's a lot of soldering and I'm not quite there yet to have another update. Expect it in a couple of days time. So today I figured I should do a video about something a little bit weird that I found the other day. If you've been following the Look Mum No Computer channel at any point over this past couple of months, you may have seen that I've gone down a little bit of a tangent. After building the relay sequencer, well, I ended up going down a little bit of a rabbit hole of telecommunications, particularly step-by-step, -step, Strouder style electromechanical telephone exchange equipment. It's a pretty funky tangent, I've got to say, and it's not super, super duper inside the realm of synths and modular synths and stuff. However, there is a plan. So if you're not aware, at the museum, there is a 50 subscriber telephone exchange that I'm currently repairing up and then hopefully the end goal of this is wiring it up to the internet as well as phones all around the place that you can ring up all of the separate sound making devices in the museum. Let's say if somebody was playing on the hooting owl that was over here and you could dial it in and you could literally listen to it or you could dial it in from over the internet. Like you could plug it into anything, the owl organ, the Game Boy Mega Machine, the Thousand Oscillator Mega Drone, you name it, you can call it up using the telephone exchange. But there's a load of other telecommunications style technology that I'm looking to wire up to this thing. Uh, namely, one of the things that I've been trying to look for this past couple of weeks were, you know, the really old modems, the acoustic coupling modems. These are crazy if you've not heard of them before. Basically what they are is they're a couple of rubber style looking suction cups. One of them's got a microphone, one of them's got a speaker. You get your telephone handset and you literally plomp it on top and that means the computer can literally talk over the telephone line via the telephone. Well, a couple of days ago I was looking for these modems and I actually ended up going down another rabbit hole. Yeah, I know I've got a stop going down these rabbit holes. And I found a really, really interesting piece of gear from the 80s, 90s kind of era that I personally had never heard of. And that specific piece of equipment is in this box. Let's go and have a look. So what is inside the box? Well, let's have a look, shall we? First off, we can see that it is the Hotel Guest Pack Case 2 of 2 Sound Advantage, a quality service from the RNII. Peterborough, hey, my hometown, 01733. I know that area code pretty well. So it's always it's nice finding something that is from your hometown, I've got to say. Anyway, we open it up and we can see what well, the fudge is on the inside. Whoa, it says do not eat, so I'll be munching on that later. Uh, dear customer, Sound Advantage, many thanks for purchasing a Sound Advantage product. It's been a lot more than 12 months after this. So yeah, here's the instructions. You get two copies, because we'll find out in a second why there's two copies. Uh, the Teletech International, uh, the Minicom 5000. So that's what we've got in this box. It's called the Minicom 5000, and this is one of them. And you're probably thinking, what the fudge are these? Well, you probably already know what these are if you've ever watched Weird Science. So yeah, this item meant that people hard of hearing could still use the telephone to call up certain uh, things or friends or family or something. This was issued to a hotel so they could be used uh, probably possibly for um, room service and stuff like that. And if you look on the other side, well, boom, 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 kablammy, we've got two of them. And you know why this is good? Because it means we can actually talk to both of them via the telephone line. How cool is that? So what these do is they aren't actually voice recognition, sadly. Uh, no, no, no. They use a code called the Bordeaux code, uh, which is something we'll touch on in a little moment. So what this does is it sends sound out to the telephone you plump on top, and that sends the Bordeaux code through the telephone waves over to the speaker of this one, and that listens, and what it does then is then it basically recognizes what it's saying and transfers it over. That is an excessively large power supply, but what are you gonna do? Right, let's get one turned on and see what the fudge it's about. It's got a signal LED. Oh, I'm typing with my, my whistle. So if I type in the letters, you'll notice that every time I type in a little letter, it sends a bidoo. So the Bordeaux code is something that was invented and developed by Emile Bordeaux 150 years ago. And it was a piece of code that was able to transmit letters and numbers and stuff over a telegraph line via five bits of information. The Bordeaux code developed into the ITA2, the International Telegraph Alphabet 2. And you can see on this chart, every single letter and number and stuff has a five bit combination. And you can notice here, there's a couple of black dots and bits where there's no dots. Uh, those are the bits. 
The black dots indicate a mark element. That's a hole that has literally been punched into a bit of tape. And if there's nothing there, there's no hole being punched into the tape. You can see that none of the letters share the same combinations. However, there is an uppercase and a lowercase. But if you see, if you look at O for instance, well, one of the cases is O and the other case is nine. And if we say the black dot is a one and the no dots is a zero, well, the O would be zero, 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 one, one. Or A would be one, one, zero, zero, zero. Amazingly enough, the first way of transmitting the Bordeaux code was using a five buttoned keyboard. And the person who was sending the code uh, knew this stuff off by heart and they were literally able to type in the letters as they went with their fingers like this. Or if they were the other way around, they could have typed it like that. This code ended up being used to talk between teletypers. These are like mechanical telephone style, crazy looking typewriters. And if you're interested in these stuff, go and check out Curious Mark's YouTube channel because he's got loads of videos on these things. I'm trying to hunt down a teletyper at the minute because they truly look fascinating machines. But the teletyper was able to decode these five bit pieces of information and write letters on the piece of paper. And they were also able to encode them from the keyboard and send out out these five bit pieces of information. These five bit pieces of code were decoded and encoded electromechanically at a universally agreed speed. Because each of these ones and zeros, these bits that we were talking about before, well, they needed to be sent one after the other. So they needed to be set at a set speed or they wouldn't know what the fudge is going on. <laughs> and this universally agreed speed was called the board rate. You may recognize the term board rate because it is still being used. If you've ever had to do anything with USB or MIDI, for instance, for instance, the board rate of MIDI, which is a lot faster than the old school version, is 31,250 bits per second. That means that MIDI cable is sending ones and zeros at the speed of 31,250 bits of ones and zeros per second through that wire, which is pretty damn quick. Which brings us on to this thing, which is actually only running at a board rate of 45.5 bits per second. The cool thing about that is it's actually audible and the beeps and bloops that you are hearing coming out of this thing are actually the board rate being sent at 45.5 bits per second. The other day whilst I was doing a Patreon Builders live stream on something completely separate, I decided to get these out of the end and have a bit of a play around. And a couple of the patrons watching actually took the audio of the Builders live stream and inspected it to see if it looked anything like the Bordeaux code. These two people were Mark Nett and Felix Riger. In fact, afterwards, Felix sent me this screenshot. And this screenshot right here is the machine sending the Bordeaux code for the letter A. And I'll read what he says about his findings. From a cursory glance, this uses frequency shift keying with two frequencies. That's the one and the zero of the five bit Bordeaux code. He mentions a bit seems to be 22 milliseconds long. Well, I hadn't mentioned to Felix that this was running a board rate of 45.5 bits per second. So if we do the maths, 22 milliseconds times 45.5 pretty much comes to uh, a thousand milliseconds, which is a second. So that means what he is mentioning and what this is saying it is doing are the same thing, luckily. <laughs> so if we have a look at this screenshot again and we can look at the letter A, if we remind ourselves on the uh, Bordeaux chart, it is uh, two black dots and then three no dots. So it'll be one, one, zero, zero, zero. Where if you look here, the uh, one is a low note and the zeros are a high note. So this first chunk is 44 milliseconds long. That means there are two ones. And then after that, there's a 66 millisecond chunk. And that means there are three three bits that are zeros. And you'll notice right at the start, there is another bit before it. What the Bordeaux code needs is a start command uh, to start listening. So it says, hello, listen to the next character. So amazingly enough, with a piece of audio that was pulled from the live stream, Felix was able to figure out that this is actually an A and this is definitely talking in the Bordeaux code. So I had a quick look on the inside. It's running on an Intel 8082 processor. It's got a really, really beautiful VFD screen and really, really clanky mechanical keys. The weirdest thing that I actually saw was there was a light bulb socket in there with no light bulb in it. It was next to the signal and the power LED, so maybe it was for that. Unfortunately, I didn't have a spare light that fitted that. All of mine were screw fit, which is really annoying. But anyway, after all of that jiff jaff, let's go and plug it in and see what the fudge it does. So now we can test them. I've got one telephone that is wired into this telephone exchange and I've got this one that is wired in to the 50 subscriber telephone exchange over there that is slowly getting fixed. So that means we're able to phone this phone with this and hopefully then we can make these two talk to each other via the whole mishmash of all this stuff. Anyway, let's give it a go, shall we? Let's pop this on here, 
turn it on. Oh, I got it the wrong way around. Okay. Hello? Hello? Oh, what, oh I have a feeling I, I'm, I'm talking to a robot. Woo! Guys, <whistles> oh, it's not doing it. I'm gonna put the lapel mic right here and I'm gonna start typing it. Because you can let you, you can hear it, can't you? Oh, I've typed in the wrong letter. Doesn't help that I can't really type. The next plan with these things, well, like I said in uh, just on the screen then, was I'm gonna have them wired up for the next time this museum is not obsolete is open, which is the coming Sunday, and it's gonna be, uh, check out, there's a load of dates for the next two months available, so if you wanna book a ticket ahead of time, we'll go and check it out. This museum is not obsolete's website is below, so if you wanna book a ticket and play on these and a load of other stuff, then go and check it out over there. But that isn't the end of the story with these things. At some point in the near future, well, we're planning to give Cosmo AI. Mark Nett, the other person I was mentioning earlier, has an idea of how to give Cosmo a bit of AI. The plan would be, would you know, be taking one of those old school MS-DOS style, you ask the computer a question and it replies with weird uh, kind of, you know, it learns a bit of pattern and basically make a bridge between that and the Bordeaux code. So you can call up Cosmo with one of these and basically have a conversation over the telephone with Cosmo. If you want to check out the Builder's Live stream that I was mentioning earlier. It was actually touching on building an analog synthesizer that is beginning to simulate a church bell. It's gonna get pretty involved. And I'll be doing another couple of Builders live streams on it over the next couple of weeks. So if you wanna check that out, go and check it out over on Patreon. And there's loads of other content like that over on there. And that support goes towards the videos and the museum. But anyway, until the next video, which is part two of the Teletubby Tidal Wave, I've been Lip Mumno Computer. This museum is not obsolete. If you like this kind of stuff, don't forget to subscribe and don't be scared to try it.